Saturday, the 30th of July, 1966. One of the great days in the history of Wembley Stadium, the greatest day in the history of English soccer. A World Cup final taking place in the very home of the most international of games. The opponents, England, who've never before progressed beyond the quarter-finals. West Germany, in whose minds is the memory of success in the final of 1954. Three o'clock approaches. Since noon, Wembley Way has been packed solid. Now, 93,000 fans are assembled, steeply ranked in tiers round the deep grey bowl of the stadium. The flags of the 16 finalists fly from masts protruding round the rim of the bowl. Lashed now by rain as the earlier blue skies are succeeded by grey scudding clouds. The Royal Marines band form a neat square of dark blue and white in the centre of the trim green turf. In the Royal Box, Her Majesty the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Prime Minister, Dr. Paul Leck, the Federal Minister for the Interior representing the West German government, dignitaries from footballing nations from all over the globe. And now the teams, marching out of the low concrete tunnel into the tumult of sound and the fluttering banners. England fielding an unchanged team, which means that Jimmy Greaves once again sits on the reserves bench, are in red shirts, the Germans in white. Led by the match officials, who walk out to the middle, nervously testing the slippery turf and line up for the national anthem. approaches the kickoff to the greatest show on earth with England defending the goal to our left let's join our commentators Peter Lloyd and first Divas Win Jones here it is the moment so many have been waiting for the beginning of the final as West Germany kick off and over our left footed kicks to his right wing the ball runs away out of play to throw into England Bobby Moore in possession Along the left wing there, there's an interception by a German, it was Hotkiss, but it's a free kick to England on the halfway line, or just inside her own half. Taken by Raymond Wilson, a short one to Bobby Moore on the halfway line on the left wing. Back to Raymond Wilson, Raymond Wilson trying to beat his man there, and then gets it along the touchline. Inside to Bobby Charlton, Peters in possession now, back to Bobby Charlton in midfield there. Across to Nobby Styles. Nobby Styles tries the shot. And it is George Cohen up there who tries to get to the ball, but the Germans in possession now. In their own half, George Cohen. Jack Charlton, Bobby Moore. In the West German half. England starting quite well now. Peters a lob into the middle there to Bobby Charlton and through to Hunt there in the West German half on his own but Jeff Hurst going forward and Nobby Stars coming on to the right wing to take a, a square pass there Nobby Stars into the middle a floated one the goalkeeper Delkowski punches out but it's a cross by Bobby Charlton into the goal mouth, and a header goes up in the air still in the and around the penalty area there with England attacking strongly but the German goalkeeper out on the ground there, the ball goes into the net, but only after the whistle.
Axel is gone and the trainer is called on. Him going up to punch away there. Chilkowski got hurt. But this was uh, no intentional foul when a goalkeeper goes up to a high ball and attacking players go up as well. Uh, he, he has to take this chance. Now, Tilkowski still being attended to. And whilst we wait now, perhaps Peter Lloyd would like to tell you his view of the first seven or eight minutes of this game. Yes, um, very interesting first seven minutes. The England forward line going extremely well and looking very dangerous. And at that moment, as Jeeves described, they had the West Germans in a terrible tangle. Hurst collided with the goalkeeper, Tilkowski, who I'm glad to say is OK, right on his feet again, on his toes, dancing about in the goal mouth. Schultz takes the kick, puts it across to Schellinger and Jeeves to continue the commentary. It's going to be lost to Peters. Jack Charlton in possession now. Short pass to Alan Ball. Jack Charlton takes the return on his head. And out to the left there where Peters has gone into position and a left foot shot for Peters. And a beautiful save by Tilkowski. Goes for a corner. And this is England looking very aggressive now. A beautiful piece of play with Peters out on the left there and trying one of these great shots of his and as I spoke the corner uh, was headed and finally kicked over the bar by Peters and it's a goal kick to Germany the ball goes up to the halfway line Saylor uh, is fouled by Wilson and the referee Jens talking to Wilson a free kick to Germany Schnellinger passing inside there to Saylor Saylor across square pass and held now, held in possession on the left wing and crossing into the middle there. Headed down by Wilson, but a bad one, and it's a beautiful shot and a goal! A goal to Germany by Haller! Well, against the run of the play, the first goal comes after 12 minutes to Germany, scored by Haller when things didn't look dangerous for England at all but Wilson a very bad defensive head header straight to Heller's foot a beautiful right foot shot from Heller and West Germany ahead and now uh, Bobby Charlton for England in the West German half so for all the menace and thrust of the England attack Peters frequently stealing through to let fly from the edge of the box the first goal goes to Germany a quarter of an hour has passed now and England is still one down. But this is a drama with many twists still to come. Man in position to take it. A back pass there. The England defence rallying itself and going back. And a ball bounces off. Roger Hunt there, but go, goes out to Held on the left wing. He crosses it, but Bobby Moore kicks it away. Schnellinger gets ahead to it. On the halfway line, it's nodded back by Beckenbauer to Schultz. Schultz, a ground pass onto the halfway line to the right, but this one goes astray from the, the man on the German right there and it's Peters in possession there dribbling into the West German half and trying a shot which hits a German plumb in the tummy there but the ball is crossed in front of the West German goal and Roger Hunt was there but couldn't get to it and it's a German goal kick Tilkowski now kicking well into the England half more heads away to Nobby start of the halfway line, to Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton going down the middle there, beating one man, pushing it out to the left, where Bobby Moore has gone up for the pass, the square pass. Moore is beaten for the ball and handles it, and it's a kick to England. And right into the penalty area, and Hurst is in! It's a magnificent equaliser for England! A magnificent equaliser from a beautiful ball from Bobby Moore, the England captain, and his club mate Hurst was up there to head into the left-hand corner of the net. So now we've been playing for 17 minutes and it's one each, England back in the game. Alan Ball under the halfway line there to Hurst, Hurst back to Peters. Peters in his own half, dribbling over the halfway line. Looking outwards to the left there, where, where Hurst gets it out to Wilson acting as left wing, but a ball too far forward for Wilson. And when the ball was right out there on the left, 
Uh, Ball and Schnellinger fall over together. They were nowhere near the ball. However, the ball in the hands of the German goalkeeper, kicking deep down again. Moore is there to head it to Wilson on the left. Wilson heads it into the middle. Schnellinger gets it to Taylor. Taylor to Schnellinger on the halfway line. Schneller out to Held on the left wing. Held with Jackie Charlton going to uh, challenge him there. Uh, Nobby Styles is there to take an attempted shot. And the ball's bouncing about on the halfway line there. And Weber gets it away out to the right on the halfway line for West Germany. The score one each. Nearly 20 minutes gone of the first half. West Germany in possession. Beckenbauer beats two men, pushes it out to the right there. And a long ball with number 11 going up for it, but headed down by George Cohen. Raymond Wilson in possession. And the ball goes out of play just inside the England half. And this is a very good time for me to bring in Peter Lloyd. Ball goes to Bobby Charlton on this side, just halfway inside the West German half. He's trying to jink inside and does. Right in the middle of the field now, Bobby Charlton with the ball forward. England falls up with him, still Bobby Charlton with it. Comes through to Cohen, who tries one. A terrible left hand, left, <laughs> left footer, which screwed away right over to the left corner post. And a goal kick going to be taken by Tulkowski, the German goalkeeper. Throws it out to Hell, down the left wing position. Beckenbauer, number four. Still all the play over on the far side. The England side defending the goal to our left. Comes through to Cohen. Cohen halfway inside the West German half. Up into the middle. And up goes Hurstfoyt. Oh, what a marvellous attempt. A wonderful save by Tulkowski. Whether he's suspect in the air, my goodness. That one of Hurst was diving, flashing, zinging its way towards the left-hand corner of the net. And he just got a hand to it. A brilliant save. Looked a certain goal all the way, but extremely well saved by Tukowski. And still the score, one goal each then. To Hotchkiss, Hotchkiss to Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer again inside to Snellinger. Out he comes again to over Overath, who very nearly scored just now, with a fine shot inside to Holt. Number 10. Again, the West Germans looking very confident, getting themselves nicely set up, and again, a corner given away by Ray Wilson, a flying header as Heller came in to try and snatch that ball away from him. Ray Wilson was across there very quickly and headed over the goal line for a corner just in front of us on the left wing position, going to be taken by Heller. Heller up into the middle, Gordon Banks fists it away. Stelligo tries to get hold of it. Hurst is with him. Stelligo puts it back to Weber and Weber puts it back to Schultz number five. Schultz now right in his own half, tucks it forward through into the centre circle. Beckenbauer collects it. Beckenbauer now trying to thread his way through the England defence. Through to Weber number six. Again, back into the West German half now. It's Weber. Beckenbauer at the back of him. Through to Peters. Peters back again to Moore. Just flips it through to Hunt. Hunt tries to find Bobby Charlton. It was a bad one. And now Germany are through. It's Holt going for it. Well tackled by Bobby Moore, who came across and saved a very dangerous situation. Bobby Charlton on the halfway line now. And now it's Alan Ball right down in front of us here, racing up the right wing now for England. And now five, six, seven England men up there, trying to get this goal before half-time. Just a second before half-time, Mr. Deese looking at his watch, taking out his whistle. Anyway, but now it'll go for the end of this first half here at Wembley. The score, one all. Yes, he's got his wrist up, he's looking at his watch. And there it goes, his two hands over his head, signalling the end of that half. England won, the goal scorer Hurst. Germany, West Germany won, the goal scorer Heller. A very good, interesting, fast first half. And who knows what power to come in the second. Yes, who knows indeed, Peter. For in the first 45 minutes, there's been precious little between these two sides. The German midfield trio of Overard, Haller and Beckenbauer has been dovetailing smoothly. And the veteran Uwe Zähler has been drifting with great subtlety out of defence, into attack and back again. But the England rearguard, that one early lapse apart, has been as solid as it has throughout the tournament. Banks, calm and unspectacular. Jackie Charlton organising with care and precision. Hurst is moving well in attack and so too is the indomitable little ball. 
And as the second half starts, once again in rain, and we rejoin Jeeva's Wynne Jones, there's everything still to play for. Bobby Moore, Bobby Moore out to the left to Wilson. But Wilson beating a man on the halfway line near the touchline. Left footed through to Peters, but it's too far for him. Schnellinger heads it away, but not very well. Alan Ball is there and a through pass there to Charlton. Can he get a pass in? No, he can't. He's brought down there, but the referee says no foul. Charlton trying to go outside there. Uh, the German pullback, and it is a goal kick to Germany. From the goal kick, Moore puts it through to Nobby Stars. Nobby Stars on the left to Raymond Wilson. A beautiful cross there. The goalkeeper has to go up, and he punches out as Hurst is upon him. And there is a volley there by Peters, which goes wide. A volley from the punch out by Tilkowski. And a very good time now as Tilkowski prepares to take the goal kick to hand you over for the rest of this second half to Peter Lord. Tilkowski, one, two, three, and does a tip through to Schultz, the centre half. Back again to Tilkowski, out again to Halap. Make no mistake about it, a, this West German team are really with it today. Very quick in attack and extremely solid in defence. Comes through to Haller, just on the halfway line. Now it's the Germans clicking back into action now. Over half number 12, bring it over the halfway line, into the English half. Puts it through to Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer's played a wonderful game and really shut Bobby Charlton clean out of the game altogether so far. Bobby Styles through to Bobby Charlton, came to Cohen. Oh, Alan Ball calling for the ball then, didn't get it, but now he's got it just on the halfway line. And it's ginger head Alan Ball, a long one, out to the left here. Martin Peters racing for it and collects it just in the left wing position here, just underneath us. Hurst going inside, so to his hunt, so to his ball, trying to thread his way through. Tries a shot, but it's charged down. Haller picks it up. Racing now for the halfway line is Haller for West Germany. Martin Peters alongside him, so too is Wilson. Puts it through to Sailor. Sailor beats one man, but can't beat Cohen. And Cohen puts it back to Gordon Banks, his yellow sweatered goalkeeper. He throws it. Beautiful one to Nobby Styles. Right in the centre of the field now, just on the halfway line. Wilson right up with him and collects the ball. A nice pass from Nobby Styles. And now the Germans falling back in defence. And the red shirted England players bearing down on the West German goal. And it certainly looked at this Schultz. Pushed Hunt there, but Mr. Deans, who's made one or two, if I may say so, very strange decisions against England, said no, play on. And now it's Jackie Charlton, long leg Charlton, bringing it through, but brought it too far. Now it's Germany, Haller right over on the left wing position there, working, working like mad is Haller. He's charged down there by Nobby Stars. the referee has a go at Nobby Stars. and Nobby Stars has a go back at the referee. Still one goal each. Lots of shaking hands going on, patting in the face and all is well. No real incident, thank goodness, so far. No dirty play, just natural blunders that happen through nerves on such a great occasion as this. The ball, in fact, is right on the halfway line. And it's Stellinger, Fairhead Stellinger. Back to Schultz, just inside his own half. And the Germans staying remarkably cool under pressure. Hotchkiss now, number two, the right back trying the George Cohen trip, bringing it right down as a winger. Put it out to Sailor, Sailor on the right wing position. Martin Peters with it, puts it back to Hodges, number two. Long one out over into the middle there. George Cohen hits it away, Bobby Charlton racing for it, right over on the far side. Halfway inside, but Bobby Charlton certainly not got the magical Charlton touch today at all. A lot of it due, I'm certain, to this German defence who've worked untiringly to see that he's absolutely shadowed all the time. George Cohen, a long one through. Hurst tries to pick it up, it's Stellinger there. Power in defence there, this big blonde left back. He tips it back to his goalkeeper, Tilkowski. One bounce, two bounces of this bright orange ball. And the turf beginning to cut up a bit now, it's the fourth bounce. That's the fifth, waiting for his attack, get into position, and away it goes. Right down into the centre circle. Haller tries to pick it up, and it comes through to Nobby Stiles. Nobby Stiles right over on the far side there. Waiting too for his attack to get into position, but it's a bad one, goes out of play on the far side. Just about halfway inside the German half. Just about 25 minutes gone. And it's still one goal each. Haller the scorer for West Germany. Hurst the scorer for England. And now it's Haller again. Haller, bad one. One of his very few bad ones. Bobby Charlton. Alan Ball now in the left wing position. Bobby Moore racing outside him now. Alan Ball twists inside. Flips it out to Moore. Moore right across there to Hurst. Hurst inside to Charlton. Oh! Charlton surely was fouled as he was going through there. The goalkeeper went down, 
in a heat, but he's up again pretty quickly. And the goalkeeper now still staggering about, having taken the kick, put it out of play. He's gone to the grounds, uh, Tilkowski. It certainly looked as if, as he and Hotskis sandwiched Charlton completely, but the referee said no, no penalty. All the England players, arms aloft. Surely it must be a penalty. So all the crowd down this end thought. We had a grandstand view of it. The television cameraman with their mobile camera whistling round now to take a shot of the goalkeeper as the trainer with him. Tilkowski now goes back to his go rubbing his ear, booed by the crowd, but I think uh, not frightfully fairly. He did very courageously, but I think uh, it was Hotchies, if anybody, who uh, came alongside and tilted Charlton in the back to send him sprawling right in the goal mouth there. Corner to England, a little out on ball, diminutive as he is, playing superbly, and now up go the cries, up go the Union Jacks, England, 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 Alan Ball, an outswinger, heads up again, Jackie Charles, they come through to Hurst, Hurst number 10, can he get a shot in, tries a right foot up, but this is, must be a goal, yeah, a wonderful goal, Martin Peters the scorer, Martin Peters is the scorer, and Wembley has gone mad, absolutely raving mad. Union Jacks everywhere. The England players, even Gordon Banks, even Gordon Banks has come up to cheer. A bad mistake by the German, West German defence. Schultz, who's played so well, holding his head in his hands, missed kick badly. Bobby Charlton was onto it. Flipped it through to Peters, who ran through, giving Tilkowski no chance whatsoever. What drama. Terrific, terrific finish now for England. Can they now hold on or get another goal? Good old England. Earl Alf Ramsey sitting right opposite, opposite us. What must he be thinking now? All the newspapermen, everybody, let's face it. All of us were great critics of Alf Ramsey and his tactics and his team. Now here they are, 10 minutes from victory, or just 10 and a half minutes from victory in this World Cup. Come on now, England. And it's Hurst now, just on the halfway line, jinking and threading his way to the West German half. Little Alan Ball, what a game he's had. He'll remember this. I know this. there's scarcely an Englishman in the ground who dares glance away from the pitch to look at his watch. But the seconds are like minutes to us all, and the German forwards lack nothing in spirit and skill. Can England hold them? Inside him, through to Charlton, Schultz is with him. Oh, tries a flyer. And Charlton goes headlong into the penalty area. The West Germans start to advance. Back go the England boys in defence, but it's Sailor there. A, oh, a bit of a mistake, this I think, all England gone back on defence. This could be fatal, Bobby Moore, high up into the air. A bad one by Stiles, but Moore, as always, rock like Bobby Moore is there, clears his lines, talking to his men, saying, come on lads, keep going for another ten minutes and it's ours. Fantastic atmosphere here now, in, in this Wembley Stadium. Everyone's heart, anyone, all the England hearts, and certain beating Oh, a good shot there from Helt. A bit of it taken by Banks. Comes through again to little Alan Ball. Right over on the halfway low on the far side of the field. Through to Peters. Peters to Ball. Ball now having a wonderful game. Oh, marvellous ball. Through to Hunt. Hunt and Hurst together. And Bobby Charlton. Oh, dear. Oh, what a goal that would have been. The three red-shirted Englishmen were bearing down like thunderbirds on this West German goal. Still then England, with their noses in front, just two goals to one, and surely not more than three or four minutes, even if that, to go, before they mount the stairs. Bobby Moore leading his team, still, I won't say any more, it's tempting fate. Charlton, a bad one, as I said that. Over off, over off, to standing there, standing there, come up right into the attack, now Beckenbauer, going to try one, comes through, safely through to Gordon Banks, bounces it confidently and throws it out to a young ball who's gone right over to the right wing position oh what a game this fella's had inside to Hurst Hurst got through one man now he's got Hunt outside him can he flip it through to Hunt Hunt trying to get in position tries a shot but it's a weak one never mind it goes out of play hits the photographers comes back into play very quickly Tukowski puts it down puts it back to his to uh, Hope there Hotchkiss I should say 
goes out to Oberoth, Oberoth right over on the far side and it's still England now just with their noses in front can only be a matter of minutes now, I saw the referee look at his watch just now must be another two or three minutes though Stellinger charged down there by Bobby Moore a third of the way inside the England half Stellinger going to take the kick just dangerously inside the England half taken by Beckenbauer though, he slipped through there took the England defence rather off guard comes to Oberoth Stellinger out again to Haller, Haller right on the right wing position and now England packed back in defence oh they mustn't let this chance go as ball comes through takes it off Holt's head very nice bit of play indeed Hurst now on the halfway line in the left wing position racing up now George Cohen right over on the far side puts it through to Charlton Charlton moving slowly into the West German defence goes through to Hunt Hunt's got Cohen outside him Alan Ball goes through to Charlton the referee jumps out of the way Charlton trying to get himself set up and I think a bit greedy there should have flicked it outside the ball West Germany now with it Snellinger to Saylor, Saylor a long one out to Oberoff, number 12 he's got Helt outside him trying a shot, oh dear Gordon Bankser had it covered, it rather slithered away looked as if it might be heading for the right hand corner but luckily England breathe again, it's just minutes to go Martin Peters saying to Alan Ball, come on lad your legs are pretty short but keep going Gordon Banks, all the whistles going all the way round the ground. Referee again glances at his watch. Martin Peters' head goes up. So too does Charlton. But it's still the Germans. Give them great credit. Playing great football. Nobby Styles gets a warning again. Nobby Styles is warned again. And again it's halfway inside the England half. It's tragic, would it not? If this led to a goal. Again, a thin red line there five of the red shirt in England players now six of them ten yards from the ball the referee measuring out the ten yards and saying come back now England Nobby Styles in the center of the pack Oberoff takes it oh it's a chance yes oh what a tragedy oh dear oh dear Weber scores for Germany two goals each then oh dear what tragedy is to fall in England literally just seconds before time in goes the equaliser for West Germany but as I say great credit to them England presented them with a golden chance and Weber came up and after two or three attempts banged it past Gordon Banks and there there goes the whistle there goes the whistle, fantastic ending. Well, it's not ending, but finished to this first part of this World Cup final. So for only the second time in its history, a World Cup final goes into extra time. Now, stamina and resolution will tell. After 90 gruelling minutes, the teams are back where they were at three o'clock, all square. So the five minutes break has gone. A cruelly short interval for players rolling down their socks to fight off cramp, massaging tight muscles and preparing to come up for another half hour with the fate of the Jules Rimet trophy still undecided. Let's rejoin Jeeva's win Jones. West Germany restart the ball, pushed out to Emmerich on the left wing. Nobby Styles comes across and the ball goes out of play midway between the halfway line and the England goal mouth. Schnellinger to throw in, Snelling out to Emmerich, back to Weber now, in possession on his own line, and gets a long ball to Haller, Haller just inside his own half, pushing it across to his left there, where Held is in possession, just inside the West Germany half, trying to go outside Allen Ball there, but Jackie Charles has not been drawn yet, but he's going into the penalty area, and he may get a cross in here, he goes across the goal off George Cohen, it's all safe for England as it happens as Peters goes out to the left there to collect the ball and push it through to Bobby Charlton just inside his own half in the middle. Bobby Charlton of whom we've not seen so much in this particular game. He's been very well shadowed, holding it now in the middle and pushing it through to Peters. Uh, to Hurst. Hurst back to Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton holding it, standing stock still there and then pushing it out to the left to Hurst it is this time. Uh, but Hunt and Hunt is tackled by Weber 
and the ball runs away out of play. Deep in the uh, German half. Thrown in by Hunt, who regains possession and crosses it. Hits the side netting, a goal kick to Jump. Tilkowski kicks high, and the goal is headed down by Jack Child into Stiles. Stiles on the halfway line, a lobbed one to the right. If Ball can catch it, he may be able to get it across as he has. Now here's a chance! And it, it hit, it's a goal, it's a goal, we don't know yet. It hit the underside of the bar, it must have crossed the line. First it was, who hit it? There's a discussion with the referee, and it is a goal! It is a goal by Hurst. Well, what excitement, because that goal that England wanted has come. But that ball hit the underside of the bar and then came out of goal. And we weren't certain until the referee had consulted his linesman whether that goal was going to be given. So England lead 3-2 with not much more than quarter of an hour to go of extra time now. And Haller in possession as West Germany kick off. Now, can England hold on to the lead this time? Schnellinger into the middle there. Headed up and away by Jackie Charlton and helped further along by Peters. But Beckenbauer is out there on the German right. And taking the ball down the right and crossing it into the middle there. Charlton heads it away, but it bounces off. But Nobby starts, fortunately, back into the hands of Banks, who throws it out a long one to Hunt on the English right. Hunt into the middle to Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton right out to the left there. Peters into the middle. Peters in possession now, beating two men. But he's lost it now, trying to go outside his man. The ball's out to Emmerich. Emmerich back to a German defender. Who, it was Overar who left foot, crosses it on the halfway line. Still in the West German possession. Beckenbauer in possession now, pushing it out to the right. It's Haller out on the right there, and Haller tries to cross the ball and hits Nobby Stars plumb in the face, but this little man is on his feet again, he's like a rubber ball, and Beckenbauer playing with the ball there, crossing it to Overar, Overar to left to Schnellinger, Schnellinger down to Hell just outside the Beldiero on the West German left, a good tackle there by Peters, but Hell has taken it from him again, but it's a free kick. Bobby Charlton trying to put it into the Belgi area. A bad one. A goal kick to Germany. Come on, Peter Lloyd, it's your turn now. Well, that was a bit of a dirty trick. He hasn't lasted out for 15 minutes, and I'm not surprised. The tension here is absolutely fantastic. But West Germans away on the right, as I say. All credit to them. They're not giving an inch of ground. Oh, a nice try there from Emmerich. Whistled over the bar there, Gordon Banks watched it glide by. Fifteen minutes each way of this extra time, and it's still England leading. Three goals to two, and what a drama over that third goal. For a moment I thought the linesman, the referee, were going to say no goal, but it turned out well for England. And here we are once again, with our noses just in front. Marty Peters in the centre of the field there, going into the centre circle. The referee waves, crossover. After blowing his whistle, England three then, West Germany two and just 15 minutes of the second half of extra time to come. I don't know quite how much they have for this half time in extra time, but the sun is shining, in England are happy, they're just taking I think some of them a drink of water, they're just changing over, so the beginning of the second half of extra time, Peter Lloyd. The sun still shining brightly, the Royal Standard, Her Majesty's Royal Standard fluttering proudly in the breeze and let's hope it stays just that way for another 15 minutes. And now it's the Germans back into attack again. Can't keep them down, they're a very, very excellent side, there's no question about that at all. And just the survival of the fittest, I think, you can imagine how tired they must be getting. And there's young ball there, long ball over on the left here to Hurst. Back again to Ball. Ball following up extremely well. Wilson's alongside him on the left here. Flicks it out to Wilson. Wilson now trying to get inside the penalty area. Tackled by Schultz. A long one over. Can Hurst get ahead to it? No, he can't. He's headed away there. Comes to Beckenbauer. What a strong, confident, calm player this young boy is for West Germany. 
goes to help right over on the far side now the cutting down into Inglis half or nearly were Jackie Charlton just got a foot to that one and held on to it flicks it back into Hurst Hurst is patrolled there by Holt Holt back to Schultz Schultz there in the center of the West German half bringing it forward now to Backenbar just a into the centre circle now, now it's the white shirted West Germans moving forward and the red shirted England players going back back and ball, tremendous danger this fellow comes to Sailor, Sailor on the right wing position trying a shot but again it's blocked there by Wilson, a lovely ball through to Hunt Hunt and ball alongside him, three English players against three West Germans Hunt tearing into the middle trying to get himself set up for a shot through to Hurst Hurst can't, can't quite get to it, the goalkeeper Tilkowski throws it out and again gets his attack moving immediately they're right up inside the English half again no quarter asked or given in this match whatsoever there's Holt right over on the far left hand wing they're right over on the cor corner post getting himself set up for a corner it's a beautiful one and Jackie Charlton Bobby Moore and Wilson it is Ray Wilson went down there in the penalty area thought he got a nasty bang but no he's okay he's up uh, given away a corner Corner to West Germany with the time running out now. Flicks it back to Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer again trying a left. Going to get one left-hander. Screws it over to Emery. Emery going to try a shot, but no. Cohen's there. Down goes Snellinger. But I think he's okay. Just holding his back. And now the England boys on the attack again. Young Alan Ball comes sweeping into the West German half. Hurst is with him. So to his Hunt. So to his Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton now. The back marker. Flicks it out to Bobby Moore. Five, six, seven England men now in their half. Hunt got it. Hunt trying a shot. And it's a beautiful shot. Just fizzes past the right hand post. Beautiful shot. Fine try and a very good move by this England side. And my goodness, they must be tired. Well, both sides must be. Congratulated for a wonderful display. Not only of soccer, but of sportsmanship as well. Allen Ball flicks it inside, but Hurst can't quite get to it, it trickles back to Tulkowski. Tulkowski now in a tremendous hurry, throws it out to Overath, Overath number 12 in West Germany, time's running out for them, brings it up slowly, naturally his legs are probably dying underneath him and he brings it into, his, into the England half and it's Beckenbauer, flicks it out now to Haller, Haller now getting himself set up to chop it inside, Styles is chasing, comes through to Beckenbauer, Beckenbauer trying to thread his way through, goes through to Holt, Holt again trying to set himself up for a shot Nobby Styles policing him though trying to go with him but Holt's a bit too quick for him but uh, put out of play there by Overath and uh, a breather again for England and watching the referee very carefully haven't seen him glance at his watch just yet Jeevers wags his head he hasn't seen him either we're both watching I can tell you intently for this moment of glory to happen if it does ball sails high into the sunshine down into the West German half and it's Schultz who picks it up. Schultz for West Germany, nobody anywhere near him. Puts it through to Emmerich. And still the Germans back on the check. Stellinger, the fullback now acting as an inside forward. It's a nice ball there, There's a dangerous movement developing on the right here. My goodness. Weber trying to chop one in. Oh, and Nobby Styles comes across and it's a bad one. Handball quite definitely, the linesman right on top of it. Flick through to Roger Hunt down on the left here. Hurst is across right on the other wing. Hunt keeping possession, threading his way into the middle. Clips it across to Hurst. Hurst takes it quite gently. Rolls it back. Now to Peters. Peters through to Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton to ball on the left wing position. Now it's um, Snellinger plays such a blinder for West Germany. Bringing it down over on the far side into the English half. Hot Hotge is trying to get it. His legs not carrying him very fast, but he just manages to stop it. Flicks it inside to Beckbauer. And the England defence all in a line there, but a bit dangerous. They're letting the Germans come at them. They must hold out if they can. Stellinger out to Overath, number 12. Again back to Stellinger. Stellinger, number three, getting himself set up for a chip shot. Oh, and up goes Bobby Moore. An overhead kick by Nobby Sullivan. He doesn't go very far. He's picked up by Holt. Hurst. Hunt is with him. Hunt goes back. Hunt goes back. And clips that ball out of play. Emmerich takes the throw. Closing minutes now. The 1966 World Cup in England's grasp. Now the ball in Gordon Banks' grasp. As it floats into his hands there. Calmly takes one, two, three paces. Throws it out. Now to Hurst. All the side with their socks rolled down. 
comes out to Hero Alan Ball on the left here. But Hunt can't. Uh, Marty Peters couldn't quite reach. It's in the penalty area now being put through there by Weber. Weber out to Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer out to Emmerich and all the crowd, or the English crowd anyway, going mad. Whistles coming from all over the place. Players beginning to limp and beginning to get slower and slower. Surely they can't do it again. My goodness, they nearly did. Sailor just couldn't get that ball, but still the Germans coming at them. That's the England trying to fight them off. And Jack Cohen wisely headed it miles over the goal line, picked up by a ball boy very quickly, very smartly. And it's a corner over on the far left-hand side. Emmerich takes it up into the centre. Banks clipped it away with his fist. And now it's Hunt again. Hunt and Hurst together. Tries to find ball, picked up there by Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss, a long one, out to Schultz. And now it's Schultz, the stopper, trying to get a shot in. Across comes Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore still as calm as a cucumber there. And surely he's only seconds away. The referee looking at his watch. Here goes the whistle. Any moment. Any moment now. Any moment now. It must go. Referee looks at his watch again. He's got his watch in his hand. And it's England on the attack. Hurst racing even. Yes! It's a goal! It's a goal! A wonderful goal! England have got it in the bag. Good old England. England that couldn't play football. And the whole place has gone mad. Absolutely mad. All the England players hugging each other. Union Jacks waved aloft. Spectators on the field. And there goes. The whistle has gone, I think. But amid this tumult, one isn't quite sure. Yes, it's gone. It's gone. And out come the reserves to congratulate their mates what a terrific match what drama and England good old England are the winners four goals to two how about that well and the photographers all streaming onto the pitch taking pictures of the heroes of England finally drove West Germany into the ground four goals to two a magnificent victory and Jeeves to add his comments well, I don't know what comments one can add to that. This is a magnificent scene here. This is the result of years of planning and this magnificent victory so dramatically rounded off by another Jeff Hurst goal with a magnificent left-footed drive from the edge of the penalty area. So, in the end, a clear-cut victory of the Jules Remake Cup which will soon be in the possession of Bobby Moore, England's captain. Heroes all, this England side. A magnificent scene here. The players and reserves now moving up to receive uh, their awards, their medals. And there's Bobby Moore climbing those steep steps to receive the cup from Her Majesty the Queen and this must be a tremendous moment for them all the Queen with this cup now handing it to Bobby Moore and the rest of his gallant team behind him receiving their medals with the sun shining brightly this immense and enormous crowd standing cheering madly England, such a happy place. Wembley, such a wonderful spot on this World Cup afternoon. For a player to score three goals in a football match is a unique performance. But to score three goals in a World Cup final, this is fantastic. A place of honour in the record books of international soccer as the first football player in history to achieve such a feat has now fallen on the shoulders of the brilliant young West Ham forward, Jeff Hurst. Jeff, how are you ever going to top this performance? Well, I, I don't think I can, really. What more can you do? You score three goals in the greatest match in the world it's ever been, possibly, especially in England. Well, I think this is fantastic. I, I can't possibly see myself doing better. I only hope to equal it in league matches to score three, which is, is all I hope to do at the moment, really. But uh, this is uh, a lot more to do, I think. Well, as far as West Ham are concerned, I suppose they'd be very, very happy if you could score three goals every week, wouldn't they? 
well, more so. I think if I could score one or two, even two goals every week for West Ham, this would be great. In the cup final, uh, Jeff, uh, were any special patterns of play worked out uh, during your World Cup build-up? Well, we always play to a fairly set pattern right through all our games. This is what Al well, Alf started this from uh, three years ago when he first took over as manager. And uh, we play to a more set pattern all the time, you know, sort of a 4-3-3 formation. I suppose you read about this in the paper. Where it is more or less a, where everybody works for one another as a team. And um, it's, there's no stars, you know, really. Everybody is fighting and trying their hardest for one another. And that this is basically the, the pattern of it, his uh, plans. Uh, did you find that having your teammates, Bobby Moore, who plays so magnificently as captain and linkman, and Marvin Peters with you help to uh, to create more opportunities for you? Yes, a big help. I found this. It's always nice to play with players that you play with week in and week out because you know their play, especially two great players like these two behind you, helping you. And uh, I found this a tremendous asset. Uh, how will league and uh, an FA Cup soccer feel to you after the uh, the immense tension of these World Cup times? Well, some people say it's going to be a bit of a a downgrade, you know, really. But uh, I think as a, with English football on top of the world now, there's so much to live up to in the league programme. Tell me, Jeff, do you think that you're going to make it in 1970 again? Well, um, this is a long way ahead, of course. I hope I'm playing as well as I am now in four years, but uh, in four years is a long time in football. Even if you can't tell what's going to happen in a year, really. Jeff Hurst, thanks a lot. Thank you. I've got Bobby Charlton with me at the moment. He's a centre forward and a brilliant centre forward of the English team. Bobby, what does it feel like to be on the winning team in the World Cup? I can't just feel it yet, you know. I don't really believe it. We work, we work that hard, you know. And then everything seemed to be going wrong for us at the wrong time. They got an early goal, then scored right at the end. I, I thought it's not our day today, but the last kept going, you know. We wanted them to full, you know. But the further that you went in the competition, the more sure you felt that you're going to get all of that World Cup in your hand, didn't you? I think so, yes. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Bobby. Thank you. Standing with me now is Jackie Charlton, and he had a hell of a lot of work to do this afternoon, trying to keep out those eager beaver Germans. You're right. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel today, Jackie? I feel fabulous now. You know, I feel a bit sorry for the German lads because it was a fabulous final. You know, I don't think it was anything between them at all, and uh, there was never anyone more happy to see the last goal go in than me. Even though we knew there was only a minute or two to go, you know. Yeah. I see that in the uh, in the second half you nearly got one yourself too. You took a beautiful diving head of the ball. Yes, I, I didn't hit it right, you know. Had I hit it right, it would have gone in, but I didn't hit it right. Did you think at any one time that the game was going to go against you today? No, I didn't. I never thought we'd go. I thought the first half, these were a much better side than what we anticipated. But the second half, when we got level, the second half I thought we came well into the game, and I thought it was just a matter of time before we got a goal. I never dreamt they would get in one a minute from time. I saw you sitting on the ground holding your head. Yeah, well, I was, was saying... Was it a headache? Little, no, I was saying a little prayer. <laughs> so, well, Jackie, your prayer came right. Up. We're very, very proud of you in England today. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm standing with Bobby Moore, the captain of the, the England team. Now, I don't think anybody could more, be more elated than, us, than Bobby Moore or uh, Alf Ramsey at the moment. But how do you feel now, Bob? Oh, naturally, we're absolutely delighted. But uh, we're so overwhelmed and overjoyed at the moment. Our thoughts still aren't really with us. No, I guess, I guess they're not. But did you feel at any one time when uh, this was going to slip out of your hands after that second goal there? No, we we felt all the way through it was going to be a very hard game. I think the danger time came just after they scored their opening goal, and we felt that um, if they'd have been one 0 in the lead for a long period of time, they might have got con control of the game. And uh, we're very very pleased to come back and get a, an early equaliser. What did the heart feel like when they got that second one? Oh, uh, we were all very disappointed because we felt so close to we virtually had the cup in our hands. But nevertheless, it's all things turned out well. So. We're very, very pleased. Did you have any plan of action when you went into today's match? Oh, virtually the same as we've always done. But I must, on behalf of the lads, say um, a very big thank you to the fans because they've been truly marvellous to us and, uh, you know, they've been a tremendous help. Bobby Moore, thanks a lot. Thank you very much indeed. history now. 
football history, that is. Soon it starts all over again. A four-year build-up, then in 1970, a new champion, or maybe the same champion. But now in 1966, it's England. Share their pride. There's a darn big lump in my throat right now. And if there isn't one in yours, well, what national sport do they have on your planet? On mine, you can believe it. 400 million of those little lumps welled up in throats of sports lovers this great world over. A wonderful, wonderful final. We laughed, cheered, cried, sang, our emotions took complete control. We chewed our fingernails down to the knuckles in suspense when Germany scored 20 seconds from time, then hugged each other in sheer delight, swallowed the lumps in our throats and tears of joy welled into millions of British eyes. English hearts pounded and swelled with pride when in 120 magical, fantastic, never to be forgotten minutes, 11 young men of England, carrying the hopes and dreams of Britons everywhere, fought and schemed with supreme soccer talent against a West German team that didn't know the meaning of defeat. And finally, as the near fanatical cheers and roars of 97,000 fans echoed and re-echoed from this vast stadium, this little band of 11 merry men made a triumphant lap of honor with a small, almost insignificant, but so very precious golden statue called the Jules Rimet Cup held tightly and lovingly on high. It's nice to be a member of this human race club when such emotion can become so universal. It isn't just one man or one team or even one country. It's a league of nations, an international football league of many peoples. A delightful, colourful, satisfying common bond. 22 players, green grass and a football. We are all brothers regardless of race, aren't we? Basically.